Well guys, welcome to TA Fishing and this is a predator fishing special. I'm here on the River Thames with James who I've been following on Facebook for a while and he has caught some pretty incredible catches of perch. James, show us what the rig is. All right, so um, yeah, we're here, we're here on the Thames to um, have a look at some lure sort of selection and what I do. I'm, I mainly lure fish um, and I've caught some absolute cracking fish along this, this particular stretch of water which I've um, fished all my life, ever since I was sort of four or five, I, I took on lure fishing. Right, so um, over the over the winter, I like to um, target my perch on these um, creature baits. This is obviously representing a craw, and um, what I'm going to do now is show you how I rig them on a Texas rig. These first, uh, as you can see, that we are float stoppers, and I, I put them on above the Texas weight just to um, stop the weight sliding up the line when I'm casting into fallen trees and really heavy snaggy cover which the perch love to hang around. I just slide two of them on there just for security. So we can see that I've got the stoppers on the end of the um, line and now I'm going to slide the Texas weight up the line so that's going to stop them sliding up, up the line. And I tie a simple Palomar knot for the, the hook, which is, um, I think, a size 2.0 um, extra wide gap hook. They're quite commonly available. Most people know them as weedless hooks, so it um, should be easy to find. And that's just W line up, overhand knot. back through the hole with the loop, <laughs> if I can do it. <laughs> you pop the hook, the, the loop, sorry, through the back of the hook. Slide that the line, pull tight, and you should have that, the loop cinch down on top of the knot, just like so. And that's ready to go. Don't need to wet this one. I'm using 20 pound fluorocarbon, so nice heavy stuff for the snaggy areas I'm fishing. I just trim that, trim that down. And these crawls I'm using, I'm actually trimming them down a bit. So um, what I'm doing is measuring the, the hook to, to the body where I think roughly I should have it come out. And what I'll do is I'll cut the crawl there, sort of you know, it's all roughly, roughly. Find the hook again, and um, to rig, to rig um, a Texas rig, as it were, you um, stick the hook in the middle of the plastic, stick it to this, to this, to the um, in, into the end of the shank, and then pop it out at a ninety degree angle. So in, pop it out, pull it to all the way to the end, and a 90 degree twist and then pop your hook back through plastic and you've got your hook point running parallel with the lure and then what I like to do is just just get the hook point in there so it's totally weedless you've got the weight that's now gonna slide down with a stopper so that can't go anywhere and you can cast that in in the most snaggiest, weediest, tree sort of spots and you won't hook up with um, the bottom. When a fish grabs the lure, they tend to grab it in the middle and the hook point comes out and then you set the hook and you've got them right in the scissors most of the time. So. This is another another method of creature bear use. It's the same, the same soft plastic lure, but I'm using it on a, a weedless jig which is intended for bass and it's got this silicon skirt around the outside and when that flutters down, sit, sits on the bottom of the water, the skirt will just puff out and it, it's, it's um, a more realistic presentation for a crayfish. And I use, I use this on um, a light bait casting setup simply because I'm a lot more confident with them and I find them a lot easier to cast in uh, and up amongst the sort of fallen trees and around the hard to get areas, I guess.
The guy's got absolutely slammed that time. I thought it was like a jack pike. And look at the creature bait in his mouth there. Unbelievable. I feel like I'm fishing with a piece of weed. That's what it feels like, guys. <laughs> but listen, hey, I'm, I'm convinced it works now. Absolutely slammed it like a pike. That's a really nice chub. That is my first chub on a creature bait. Let's get this guy back, hopefully. Don't go You've with already him. been in the I river don't once. Go with him. I've been there. I've got the t-shirt. I'll, I'll grab your leg. Yeah. <laughs> there he goes. Lovely. Lovely in the mud. Well, I thought I'd get fish that time, but it's a snag. Do, all right, I've got a little tip to um, see if we can get you out sure. of the snag. What I do, especially with mono or fluorocarbon line, you've got a bit of stretch in the line. I um, pull the line tight and ping ping the line, and it can normally push the lure back off whatever it's, whatever it's caught on. But for example, it's, it's not going to work this time. <laughs> But, but it can work though. But that's how I mainly get all my lures off, off the snags because, like I was saying, I drag the lures along the bottom and fish in amongst all the snags. So you, you do get hooked up even on, you can be weeded. Every, every once in a while point. you're going get to get your lure back, which is a bonus. Most of the time, maybe 70% of the time I get the lure off the snag. But Well listen, as anglers, we nearly always lose lures. It's just the way it is. You've got to live with it, haven't you? Uh, this one's just just oh, you popped got it out. out. You got it just out. Just popped out. Well um, done. There we go. Hook's not bent. Just just pung out. Just like that. Ready to use. It's um, probably caught in the in the yoke of a tree branch or something. And when you when you ping the lure, what it's doing is sending a shock down the line and it just pushes it off whatever it's caught on. Got it. And um. Go. So would you say if you're hooked in a snag? not to really back off and pull it hard first. If you go, oh, it's in a snag, don't pull the hook into it. Try and yes. sort of pick it off first. I try and edge, when I, when I find that you've, you've caught, you're caught in a snag, I try and edge, slow, first I'll sort of pull some soft tension on the rod. Sure. And if it's not coming, I'll do a couple of gentle pings and then, and then normally it'll just pop off of whatever it was caught over. Gotcha. Just most of the time you've, you've got the, um, the lure in this, it's wrapped over a branch or something, and the lure, the hook's not in anything. It's oh, just, I see. The lure it's, isn't got it. It's just, um, it's just something stopping that edge from passing through the, yeah, the, um, over the snack. Just saw me. Oh, as a, as you got up. No, he might have been hooked by them guys. So they, they don't tend to. No, he's not interested. Is he just he's going past him? He's not having it, is he? So um, I'm, I'm using as natural um, colours as I can to really imitate the crayfish as realistically as possible because in, in my rivers we have, have a massive boom of crayfish and the, all, all of the predator species feed on them. Um, I've caught, I catch, regularly catch pike and chub, not just perch on, 
on um, crayfish imitations and even occasionally the odd zander which are quite quite rare to um, my waters. Also notice that some of the um, the, the perch I've been catching um, especially they, they have such massive frames really large large fish but the, the weight just isn't there when I've been to other, other rivers that don't have as many crayfish or in fact none present the, the size of the fish I've been catching are a lot smaller and they weigh a lot more to what I'm used to on the Thames which is um, it gives me the re it gives me the idea that they really heavily feed on the crayfish but it doesn't it doesn't help them put on weight as such but it makes them grow bigger bigger framed fish out of this this particular stretch of the river I've had now to date um, my PB is four pound two ounces I've caught numerous three pound fish I've had some crazy sessions we've had um, sort of six or seven three pound perch in one swim at one sort of time with either me by myself or me with my buddies I have a few of the few of these um catches on YouTube as well probably check them out so some some of these um spots I do fish are inaccessible um, from the bank so I use this this boat not just to to fish off but I can use it for transport to um get to other spots that you just can't on on foot also, I use fluorocarbon straight through on my on my casting reels, especially with the weedless lures. One, because when you cast it into the snags, it's a lot less delicate than braid. If you have it caught on a limb or something, it doesn't it doesn't get damaged as easy. But the thing I think really makes a difference is supposedly invisible to the fish. Also, I I never never have problems with pike while using fluorocarbon. But you. <laughs> The fluorocarbon I use is of a high quality. It's all made in Japan, and it's it's sort of like you get your standard glass, and then you get your toughened glass. This is like the toughened version of of your fluorocarbon. Um, it's, it's nothing special, nothing particularly expensive. It just works really well. And I use I use one I use two rods for perch fishing. Both of them are bait casters. This is my lighter setup with ten pound fluorocarbon straight through. I'm fishing a seven gram plastic on that which got a real slow fall in the water because of the um the fiber guard and this is my other other setup which is um same sort of thing just 20 pound fluorocarbon and i'm fishing the texas rig on that because that's my for, for fishing he the heavier snags so um how i actually fish these lures i um i drag them along the bottom real slowly because that's the most natural way that a crayfish moves and um you'll be you'll be shocked if, if you start fishing them too quick and jerking them around you, you'll still pick up the odd perch but you get a lot of interest from pike and i try to eliminate eliminate all my um my the pike coming into my fishing anyway because i'm specifically targeting perch with the style of lures i use i like to use a lot of stuff that's originated for bass and these are these are shaky heads so um that lure that weight you'll you have your line coming out of here and on a on a tension line the the shake head should stand up a little and you've got that natural wiggling of the worm off the bottom and then on a slack line it'll drop so that's a, a good way of fishing the lure static without move without really moving it across the bottom and having a good old wobbly tail wafting in a fish's face and you get a good old a good old bite with that and i've got various different sort of shapes and sizes of craws some um, natural and some probably outrageous colours but you know it all, all, all has its day got the odd shad in here I, I make some of them myself um, great again for perch probably a bit for me I use them a bit more in the summer time with the kicking tail I've got a tree in my hair <laughs> oh. oh my god it's a pike is it yeah <laughs> it's something no hey this goes to show about the fluorocarbon and the pike. Yeah. You know, you can. Uh, what I do, you pike. They've got teeth. I'm using fluorocarbon. I'm not being stupid. If they're, if they're really pulling, I've got your, your drag set. Nice, nice efficiently. The the pike thrashing around will never cut through the fluorocarbon if if it can pull line. And then if you're really worried, you think, oh, it's, it's pulling off. I don't, just, with the bait cast, you can just disconnect the spool and. Let him, let him swim, just so you put minimum tension on the line. That's the lure I've had it on. 
obviously the pike, pike love eating the crayfish too. You know, they're fun on light tackle. That's what it's all about. Fishing is supposed to be fun. Yeah, I kind of felt, thought so. <laughs> <laughs> We've had the otters reintroduced to um, our waterways here. This is uh, the, the damage you can see that happens to um, the perch. The, the otters will catch the fish and um, they, they've got a high protein diet and they'll just, just take the gills because they're full of protein and the, the river's full of lovely, lovely fish like this and um, it's an easy food source for them and they're dam absolutely damaging our fish stocks and you can see inside of Ted, the gills have been removed, everything else is still there, the guts are still in there, some pretty gruesome but this pike head was right next to it, it's obviously um, a bit of a feeding ground for the otter Oh my god, this is starting to look a bit criminal. There's um, the, what remains of something here. What is that? That's another pike head. What is going on? So, so two pike, that stinks. Oh, two yes. pike heads and a nice decent perch. Well guys, we are getting near dusk time. It's the witching hour and it's been really tough fishing, fishing today, just in general. Uh, Dad got lucky with that chub earlier, which is an incredible chub. I thought it was really, really good. Um, and James had that pike pretty much last knockings. Hopefully we're gonna have probably one or two more swims, couple more casts, that's it. It's getting dark pretty fast now that it's the winter time. And we've also got to get back in the boat to get back home. So we'll give it a few more casts. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video and uh, please subscribe, like, comment, and hopefully we'll be back out with James again to get some more big perch.